you put it in the hands of the parents, and the parents are themselves uneducated mm -hmm. and not really aware of what the various potentials are, what makes you think that they would decide more intelligently than the present system? I think, again, history. Uh, blacks, as blacks emerged from slavery, oh, a minute percentage could read or write, and yet in half a century, over half the black population was literate. Uh, an economic historian has called that one of the most remarkable things in history. If you look back to the era prior to the Civil War, when there were free blacks about uh, half a million in the United States, they not only were not allowed in the public schools, they were in some states forbidden even to send their children to private schools and had to do so clandestinely. And yet the census of 1850 showed that most free blacks could read and write. What's going on everyone? So we're here today. We're reacting to a video with Thomas Sowell and his belief of what is the path to a better schools. I wanted to react because uh, I got a comment uh, on a previous video about my thoughts on uh, the disparities in educational outcomes between black students and minority students in general compared to white uh, their white counterparts. And I attribute it mostly to uh, other factors, not due to just them being black or white or social economic factors. I believe the root cause of all this is personal decision making within a particular community group, right? But end of the day, I can agree on the same solution. The solution to me is school choice because school choice is known to uh, provide an incentive for public schools, which majority of kids are educated in the public school system. <laughs> where stats are coming out or you've seen stats in the results that black students and minority students underperform severely in public schools and people in public schools don't have the ability to move their kids out of public schools and put them into private school charter schools this is why teacher unions are so against school choice because it effectively threatens the teacher's livelihood of like guaranteed employment right when a teacher is doing a bad job in public schools, they just move her to a different school. It doesn't make sense. Like, you, you get me? There's no real, like, enforcement of, hey, performance-based education. And I think when you introduce school choice, it puts that incentive like, hey, we're going to compete to try to get the best teachers. And the underperforming teachers will, you know, will actually have to better them, their performance or their quality of education or lose employment. <laughs> And I think this is one of the many very good factors that's going into this, but let's get into the video. I rambled enough. Let's get into it. We have with us Mrs. Harriet uh, Pilpel, who's well known to this uh, viewers of this program. Mrs. Pilpel is a uh, an attorney with Greenbaum, Wolf and Ernst, a graduate of Vassa and of the Columbia Law School and very active in a number of liberal and feminist uh, movements, Mrs. Pilpel. There, there are, as you said, many blacks today who are still being given totally inadequate education, yes. cannot be expected to get very far for that reason. What would be your remedy for that? I know. Oh, I would, oh, that, that's uh, very easy. I would allow their parents to have a choice of where to send them to school, whether that choice is called a voucher scheme, open enrollment, tuition tax credit, any kind of scheme of that sort that would put that power in the hands of their parents, mainly because that would mean that the schools would have to be responsive to them. As it is now, the school is a monopoly. They need not be responsive. Mm -hmm. I have relatives right here in New York uh, whom I've had to intervene for because the schools would not even treat them decently, much less give them access to the information they wanted that they were entitled to under the law. Exactly. Right? This is why I like Thomas so, so much because he preached this message of stop looking for saviors. Tell the government, hey, put the resources in my hands because I don't know what to do with it. God, no. And that's the facts because a third party cannot make a decision on behalf of two people, right? If I'm a third party and you and another person are trying to make a deal, I don't understand the ins and outs, the motivations, the inclinations of why you guys are participating in a deal. So if I come in and try to give a one size fit all solution for your particular case, it may work for you, but most cases it may not. And this is why government is not good uh, in solving problems. This is why Ronald Reagan famously said that the worst thing a government can say to you is I'm here to help because it's so inefficient, so bloated that what a, what a, what people what a third party observer knows about your intricacies, your nuances of your family life, right? As a minority student 
if you go to a public school, you have a way underperforming, inadequate education. And that's where, I don't know, when the, what was it, the 70s? The 80s, they were talking about this stuff. I think the problem is even worse now today. I think there was a school in Michigan, a public school in Michigan, where they had black students with a 0.6 GPA. Can't read at a third grade level. But y'all want to keep throwing, you keep wanting tax dollars to keep throwing money in to the public school system where the administration is just going to soak it all up and then to get the teachers get the straps, bro. Bruh. Make it make sense. Right? And and with school choice, and this is what the main people who want to privatize education uh, are going with it, is that education is the last place that innovation has not hit yet because it's being artificially protected by the government. And this is the monopoly that Thomas Sowell was pointing out in this uh, his, his, his little speech in the statements, opening statements here in the video, is that the government is like, and this is due to teachers unions. And this is what I was talking about is that when parents come with their concerns, hey, public schools, y'all need to change this. Y'all need to stop doing this. It's met with deaf ears because they're like, yo, you, you got no power. You can't leave. If you leave, it's more you, you have to pay to put your kid in public school or I mean, sorry, in private school. To get an adequate education. Bruh. But with school choice, that eliminates that choice. Every Imagine, it don't matter if you're a single mom or a rich stay-at-home family. Y'all both have access to the same level of quality of education. Maybe at various levels, but that school choice, that voucher program, it will help a, a single mom able to put their kids through, put them in a better educational opportunity. They don't have to sit there and tolerate an underperforming school system with their child. Bruh. And this is why I don't, I don't understand why uh, teachers are so against school choice. And this is why I think teacher unions, school boards, they don't have the best interest of the child and the parent at heart because they're looking out for themselves. And what what they're looking out for themselves is, hey, we want to have control. We want this monopoly because we want our guaranteed jobs where we don't have to be under scrutiny, where we can go to the government and dictate, hey, you shouldn't open schools. We don't feel safe in schools. Bruh. In a privatized environment, you can't do that because people will be like, okay, your school's not open. I'll just take my kids somewhere else. But in public schools, they're being held hostage. But hey, man, I digress. Let's get back into the video. If you put it in the hands of the parents and the parents are themselves uneducated mm -hmm. and not really aware of what the various potentials are, what makes you think that they would decide more intelligently than the present system? I think, again, history. Uh, blacks, as blacks emerged from slavery, all and minute percentage could read or write, and yet in half a century, over half the black population was literate. Uh, an economic historian has called that one of the most remarkable things in history. If you look back to the era prior to the Civil War, when there were free blacks about uh, half a million in the United States, they not only were not allowed in the public schools, they were in some states forbidden even to send their children to private schools and had to do so clandestinely. Mm. And yet the census of 1850 showed that most free blacks could read and write. Damn. So even without public school, that, that's homeschooling technically. And uneducated, and, and it shows in the statistics. I think AC, uh, ACT has a stat out there where they show you the average score of each kid and what background they come from. Public school is at the bottom, homeschools right in the middle, and private schools at the top. And to me, I'm like, yo, you know, the average cost of homeschooling is $600 a year. All, but it's a huge time investment. I, I grant it. Not a lot of people can make that time investment. But that's how much, that's how effectively a kid get a better quality education with just six hundred bucks compared to what public school spend, which is about six grand, sixty five hundred per kid that the government spends for private school. I mean public school. Public school also has another problem, and this is a process problem that I'm calling out specifically. Is the difference between public school and charter school is that charter schools have standards. You're not allowed to interrupt kids in the classroom. If you do any type of, like, you talk loud, you interrupt the classroom, you get suspended and you get kicked out of the charter school. They don't take well to um, unruly uh, students. While in public school, they do. A kid can be unruly, just get detention, but still be around the other kids. And that disrupts the, the flow of the classroom. That impacts the learning of other students within the same classroom if, if these uh, disruptive kids are allowed to run amok in the classrooms, right? Because there's policies out there where you're not allowed to suspend kids nowadays. But, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, what, what happened to public school? 
They didn't. They don't enforce any standards or boundaries because you know, you know. Oh, no child left behind. Oh, we don't want to make kids feel uncomfortable. Like, come on, like, Bruh. like this is and this is the point I'm trying to make. And a lot of free market economics always make that the consumer or the individual will always know more about what is better for their specific situation than a third party observer. That is the main point I'm trying to get to. Sorry, I ranted. Let's get back into the video. So I don't think that uh, the fact that people have little education means that they are in any way uh, uh, poorer judges than distant bureaucrats who have their own access to grind and running the public school system. But you yourself said that you thought one of the reasons why blacks were still in an underprivileged position, those who still <coughs> are, was because they had not been given a proper education. Yes. And we are now talking about people who had not been given a proper education, making decisions for their children as to what is a proper education. Do you need to be educated to realize that an, uh, what is a better product for you, an iPhone or a Samsung? Nope. You don't. You don't need an education to evaluate that a Ferrari is a better car than a Honda, right? D do you? Mm. You, you, you don't need an education to judge something. You can judge something based on the result. Hey, I see a lot of people coming out of this school. I need to put my kid in there. Oh, I heard from the grapevine that my aunt put my niece in this charter school, and she's doing fantastic. She had problems with public school. My kid has problems with public school. I could put my kid in that situation as well. I just don't have the means to do it because I'm a poor single uh, mother. Bruh. That's the reality. But if school choice was there, hey, they'll be able to act or act on that. Okay, I'm just going to put my kid over here. And to try to like take this elitist stance. To me, that's an elitist stance. Oh, I know better than you. I know what's best for you. That's the attitude these uh, elitist people take. And I'm going to recommend this book, and it's going to be a description in the comment section, uh, not in the comment section, in the description below, I'm going to recommend the book, Vision of the Book, right? And it takes this stance of how our, uh, the intellectuals or these academics have such an elitist view of themselves that they think they know what's best for you, that they know what's best, for, they, like you don't know anything, you don't know what's good for you, they know what's good for you, right? And this is what I, this is why I love Thomas Sowell so much, is that he preaches that there's no saviors here. You can't, the Republican ain't going to save you. The Democrat ain't going to save you. Only you can save you. And if you're better informed, you'll be able to demand better policies from your politicians, regardless of your political party. And that's the message I kind of want to push out. Even though I advocate for one party, it, all I ask is, hey, I want better politicians. I want better policies out there. I'm trying to the same old, same old. Let's actually get politicians that want to get something done and not to just want to fill their own pockets. That's all I'm trying to say. But let's get back into the video. Education, and you're saying that they, if that was put up to them, mm -hmm. they would make a wiser choice than the present efforts to integrate the let schools. Me, let, let me uh, say that if they would not make a very different choice, it would be hard to understand the hysterical opposition of teachers' unions to giving them that, that opportunity. Exactly. Well, I have no comment on that, but I would like to know how Bill feels about improving educational opportunities. Oh, uh, I, I, I believe with Dr. Soul that uh, the voucher system uh, obviously encourages parents to use the same kind of selectivity that's available to to parents who have enough money to send their children to private schools. And exactly. To, to and, and it's crazy how much resistance there is to those voucher programs, right? It's just to protect status quo. And I've always been saying this, like the, Demo the teachers unions are in the Democrat, the Democrats are in the teachers unions back pocket because they know Teachers unions, school board members, they vote he heavily Democrat. They donate heavily Democrat. This is why Democrat caters so much to the, these teacher unions. Why they, they write policies in favor of these teacher unions. Because they get their vote. That's their voting base. That's their constituents. So they won't, they won't bet against them. This is why you see every Democrat on long party lines are so uh, hostile towards charter schools. Uh, hostile towards school choice vouchers. When we've been doing the same educational system for I don't know how long. Since the industrial age, we've been teaching, we've been doing education the same way. And if you privatize education, it allows an opportunity for innovation. Bro, come on. Bruh. And not even to allow the opportunity to, hey, let's try this and test it out. They don't even want to even test it out. That should show you how scared or how, how much against, how much, how threatening school choice is for the public educational system. The worst performing educational system in America today. Based on the results, ACT scores, private schools perform the best. Second to them, homeschool kids. 
Then you got public school. Like it's a it's a bro moment. It's crazy. I, I don't know what to tell you, but that's just the results. The results is that public school is not a good educational system. And if you gave parents the choice to take their kids out of public school, they will. And most teachers know that. This is why they're so against school choice. Because they know if given the option, parents will take their kids out of public school. And the same Democrats that are a big advocate of public school, they don't even put their own kids in public school. Bruh. Nope. They don't. How dare you? I'm just saying. That shows you, you you know them by their actions. If they believe so much in public schools, why don't Democratic politicians have their own kids in public schools? That's a question you need to uh, you need to ask their uh, fellow constituents if public schools is such a good option. The stats prove it itself. But are we supposed to sit there and believe, oh, public schools, nothing's wrong with it. Everything's fine. All we got to do is throw more money at it. Money's the problem. Nope. No, it's process. The process is the problem. And until it changes that, it's going to keep getting the same result. To give, the, to give a versatility of choice, a flexibility of choice to parents of poor children, uh, the same versatility that is given to parents of wealthier children uh, is obviously desirable. And you think that their ability to make the decision is equal? No, no, but I think, I think it, it, it may be equal, it may be less equal, it may be more equal. I think that the phenomenon of the of poor and, and, and uneducated uh, a parent who seeks for his, his or her children what he himself has never achieved for himself is, is much, much more commonplace oh, God, yeah. than, than, uh, than, the, than the kind of sated, uh, self-satisfied parent who, who typically neglects the education of his child. I, hmm. I think you'd have uh, very few blacks who finish college, including myself, if they had to have college-educated parents to send them there. Uh, I, you know, that uh, there was no one in my family that went to college before me, and I, and among the blacks that I know of my generation, I would say that's the rule rather than the sure. exception. My it's crazy. Like, imagine this woman saying, "Oh well, these these parents are not educated enough to make the decision. Educated based on what? Nowadays, most people think. Some people think you go to college, you get indoctrinated. You don't get no real education there." And, but all of a sudden, my kid that I've known since birth, you, you, you're supposed to, I'm supposed to accept that you, you're you going to know what's best for him more than me? Given to that, that I know all his peculiarities, what he's good at, what he's bad at, what he likes to do, what he don't like to do, what his strengths, what his weaknesses are, what he love, what subjects he loves, what subjects he hates. I have all these nuanced information about my kid, but I'm supposed to defer to a third party observer saying, no, this is the best description for your kid. Nope. I, I don't agree. We've been doing this for I don't know how many years, and we've seen the results we're getting. And then everyone's complaining, oh, America's falling behind. Look at all these other educational systems that Japan is using, that Finland's using. Like, it's, the process needs to change. I think Biden made a, 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 a suggestion about putting kids into school, public school, earlier. I'm like, nope. I'm not putting my kid early into this school. What? You want me to educate? What? No. Y'all need to change something in your system. Y'all need to keep the same length of time and actually approach it differently instead of just being like, no, 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 they need to be in school more. It, 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 I don't understand why, it, what, what's this um, this whole clutching of curls. They don't want to change nothing about the educational system. I don't understand that. And it only makes parents like me want school choice even more because it's time that education gets some uh, disruption. It's, it's, due, it's due time. We got technology got disrupted. Banking got disrupting. I thought I'll never see banking get disrupted. Now it's getting disrupted with all these fintech companies. Now I need to see some uh, educational disruption too. Khan Academy teaches your kids better than public school education. <laughs> Khan Academy, when I was going, like I was, get, uh, it came around in high school. Oh my God. That was the best thing ever. Help me learn a bunch of subjects. You literally can homeschool your kids just using Khan Academy and they'll have a more comparable or better education than you have in public school. That's the bet I'm, I'm willing to make. But I digress. Let's get back into it. Son, the doctor syndrome. Absolutely. Well, uh, I think that in, insofar as your own experience is concerned, you are clearly an exceptional person. 
and it is somewhat reminiscent of what the Minister for Women's Affairs said in France when she was asked whether there was going to continue to be a Ministry of Women's Affairs now that women had achieved such great strides forward. Her answer was, as long as the average woman does not have the same opportunities as the average man, we need to have a government office which will try to get them some sort of equal opportunity. But it's precisely the government which is denying it in this case. It's the government which has been running these schools from which the kids graduate semi-literate. And for, for years, black parents have been sending their kids, not just me, but a whole generation of blacks to college, to high school, whatever. If you look at the history of black education in the United States, that has been largely, at the beginning, uh, an effort by the blacks themselves. It was 1916 before there were as many blacks attending public high school mm -hmm. as were attending private high schools. So there's a very long history of blacks trying to get their kids educated. I might say from my experience, again, not my own story, but at black colleges, the parents who work nights and drive, fathers drive cabs and mothers who scrub floors to see that their kid gets an education. If there weren't such people, you wouldn't see half as many blacks with, back with uh, college degrees today. And they're beating down the doors of Catholic parochial schools, yep. even non-Catholic blacks, to get in there. Yes. What percentage would you say of the total number of blacks were in private schools or beating down the doors of parochial schools? Would it not be a considerably less than half percentage? That's right, because they don't have the money. And you, you could have made exactly the same argument against the GI Bill that why should you have a GI Bill for people to go to college when the rich are on, when only the rich go to college? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is why I love Thomas Sowell. Man, great argument, right? Because they everyone's like, oh, uh, uh, tax dollars shouldn't be paying for your education for your kid. If you want the education for your kid, it should come out of your pocket. Okay, what about welfare? Oh, what about housing? Oh, what about food stamps? We don't, we don't, we don't do this argument for those well, that stuff. And when conservatives do make those arguments, oh my God, you're so heartless! How dare you? You're so heartless. How could you? But then we act. Okay, let's be logically consistent. How about you make a voucher program so we can put our kids to education? It's a how dare you? How dare you? Come on, guys. You liberals need to be consistent. Come on, because y'all liberals be the main one against this stuff. The government is actively getting in a way to make it harder for you to make. A choice because end of the day, I argue, government is about control. They want kids to go to public school. They want the majority of kids to go to public school. And if you can't afford it, huh? They want the plebs. They want the average person to get educated through the public school system because that's where the government has the most control over the curriculum. Charter schools they have less control of the curriculum. Private schools they have no control of the curriculum. And that is the real reason why. Public schools or school system in general has not been changed in decades, in centuries, because the government wants control. And this is why I'm not I'm not Democrat. Like, I can never vote Democrat at this point, because what I want, the Democrat stands in my way. I want a better school system. Democrats in the way, because the Democrat solution is just throw more money at it. Of course, you want more money at it. You control it. Come on. Bruh. And then they wonder why parents are more and more parents are trending towards homeschooling their kids. That's a, homeschooling is a consideration I'm making. Public school is under no regards. I'm making that decision. I don't care how many of you guys come in the comment section telling me public school is great. It's not. I've been to public school and it wasn't. It wasn't good. My mom, a single mom, by herself, was able to put me into private school. Now it wasn't the most fancy mansion private school in the in the area. I understand that, but. It, it gave me a better educational outcome than the public school I was in. I was in public school until third grade. That's my personal story. My single mom was able to do that because she made sacrifices for me. And that's what these teachers unions, these school boards, they don't understand. That parents are willing to make sacrifices to set their kids to get a better opportunity. And that's Thomas Sowell's main argument. That, that What kind of education you need to recognize that, hey, I need to set my kid up for better opportunities than I had. Bruh. Bruh. The, uh, I don't understand, but hey, let's get back into it. Well, the reason the rich were the only ones going to college at that time was because there was no GI Bill. The whole point of this is to put this choice within their hands. It is hard for me to understand what harm is going to be done by allowing parents to have a choice as compared to having self-interested bureaucrats have a monopoly. Exactly. Exactly. Adequately done by Tom. God, 
adequately done, uh, said by Thomas Sowell, right? It's just to protect their own interest. Control. They just want control. They want to be able to put gender queer theory into schools and and no one challenges them because they know Democrats are in uh, the teacher unions are in the Democrats pocket. Teacher unions have favorable bias towards the Democratic Party. Politicians in general, they want to be able to control what you see here. Right. They don't want private schools making uh, private schools. They're like, OK, only a minority can go into there because only rich people can afford private schools or well off people. High middle class people can afford private schools. Right. But they know the low income, which is the majority in this country, they're only going to go to private, uh, public school so they can control the education. That's it. Bureaucratic. That's all it is. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. You agree, disagree. You believe this. What, what you believe is the true path to a better school system. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And thanks for watching to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.